Good morning and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, uh, yet another episode that I've decided to release about a controversial topic that I discuss on this channel, and that is, of course, matters regarding techno-signatures and alien civilizations. And I really am, try to be very careful about this sort of thing. I never discuss UAPs, UFOs that have only observational data that really can't be confirmed or photographs that could be faked or misleading. Instead, I only deal with things that we have a great deal of observational, confirmed observational data on, which is usually restricted either to radio signals of some kind or some sort of astronomical phenomena like a muamua. However, just recently, Breakthrough Listen announced that you Utilizing a new type of algorithm, they discovered eight new signals, any one of which could fit into what we've been looking for all this time, transmissions from an extraterrestrial civilization. So, of course, we've heard this sort of thing before, and oftentimes these signals get debunked or after greater analysis and more information having been gathered are identified as radio interference or perhaps some sort of astronomical phenomena that just wasn't that easy to identify. But this new algorithm that Breakthrough Listen made use of filtered out all of these possibilities before submitting these eight signals for further analysis. Indeed, these signals don't bear any similarity to any known astronomical phenomena, nor do they fit any of the characteristics of radio interference. Instead, they all seem to be signals coming on a narrow band frequency from stars that are 50 light years away from our sun or less. And the implications for this, if they turn out to be real, and the only thing that really remains for them to be confirmed at this point is if they repeat the same signals repeat, then we could be looking at a strong possibility of other civilizations existing right in the neighborhood. Civilizations who, if they make use of one of these breakthrough types of propulsion systems that I've talked about on this channel, could in theory show up on our doorstep tomorrow. In fact, in theory, they could already be here. Oh yes, and a real quick update on Boca Chica and Starship. I have started to wonder whether or not I should actually cover the static fire because it is possible that if the static fire doesn't go well or if it results in some sort of catastrophic anomaly, we could be looking at a very long time before Starship can actually take flight. This 33 engine static fire is going to be a pretty momentous event and the fact Fact remains that you know my current fundraising campaign has raised nearly enough money to send me to Boca for a full week, if not longer. So I am going to put a poll on Twitter for the viewers to respond to as to whether or not you would like me to head to Boca over the weekend to cover this momentous event, this 33-engine static fire from the most powerful rocket in human history. If that were to happen, it would mean that I would have to do another fundraising campaign in order to go back. However, I'm going to leave that all up to you as to whether or not you'd like to see that happen. Once again, the poll is in Twitter, so follow me there. Let's get on with Breakthrough Listen and these new signals. 
The signals in question were detected during an analysis of 480 hours of data from the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia, and eight previously undetected signals of interest that have certain characteristics expected of genuine techno signatures were found. So how was this done after all of this looking in the past? Well, the research was led by a University of Toronto undergraduate student named Peter Ma, who began working with the breakthrough listen team while still in high school, and he identified about 3 million signals in scans of 820 stars, utilizing a new type of algorithm. Dr. Steve Croft, an astrophysicist with the breakthrough listen team, said the following about the study, quote, the key issue with any techno signature search is looking through this huge haystack of signals to find the needle that might be a transmission from an alien world. Alien world, yes indeed, they're using these kinds of words. The vast majority of the signals detected by our telescopes originate from our own technology, GPS satellites, mobile phones, and the like. Peter's algorithm gives us a more effective way to filter the haystack and find signals that have the characteristics we expect from techno signatures. So what are the characteristics of techno signatures? Well, first of all, they have to be narrow band signals that cannot be created by any known or foreseeable astrophysical system, only by technology. Also, they exhibit a non-zero drift rate, which means it comes from a transmitter that was not on the surface of the Earth, or at least that's what the data seems to indicate. The signals also have drift rates that change smoothly over time, as would be expected for transmitters that are orbiting a star or rotating, also absent in off-source observations, as would be expected for signals that are localized on the sky, and finally, these signals persist over a long period of time, making it different from artificial satellites or aircraft that have been observed in the past. Now, they still could be background radio signals of some kind, or perhaps just background interference from local technology, but thus far, that does not seem to be the case. So where are these signals coming from? Well, interestingly enough, multiple signals have sometimes come from the same star, just on different frequencies. For example, star HIP 54677 had two separate signals coming from it on different wavelengths. In addition to that, star HIP 13402 also had multiple signals coming from the same star as did HIP 62207. So interesting indeed that out of all of the millions of signals that were studied and out of all of the stars that were observed within 90 light years, yeah, 90, not 50, as I stated previously, we had six different signals that came from the same stars. That is an interesting coincidence to say the least, but let's have a look at the stars that only one signal came from at first. HIP 118212 is a red star located approximately 57 light years away from Earth. In spite of its relative proximity, it's a dim star and cannot be seen without binoculars. It's also larger than the sun and cooler. Not much larger, about a third larger roughly, so not an ideal star for a planetary system to exist around, at least not a planetary system that would host life as we know it, but once again, certainly not impossible. A star like this would definitely have a habitable zone, but we just don't know a great deal about it at this time. Definitely a very promising candidate for us to study in the future, given the fact that we've received an interesting signal from it. However, this star is not as promising as some of the others. Star HIP 56802, also known as Iota Craterus, is visible from our sun and is a fairly hot star, but nevertheless about the right age to 
have produced an intelligent civilization on an exoplanet orbiting it, although no exoplanets have been detected up to this point, but then again, a great deal of study hasn't been done on this star up to this point either. It's approximately 1.7 times larger than the Sun, it's also hotter than the Sun, but it's between 4 and 5 billion years old, certainly a long enough time period for intelligent life to have developed, and it's also 88 light years away from Earth, so a fairly good distance from us, but at the same time, definitely within our local neighborhood in the Milky Way galaxy. But the rest of the stars are even more promising, once again, as I said before, because multiple signals were detected coming from them, or at least that appears to be the case. For example, star HIP 54677. This is a main sequence star that's smaller than our sun and also cooler than our sun, and as I said before, two different signals were detected in the survey. Now, there are no exoplanets having been detected up to this point, but once again, the star has not been very thoroughly studied also. It's located approximately 70 light years away from our sun, so again, well within the local neighborhood, and it cannot be seen from Earth with the naked eye. It unquestionably has a habitable zone, just like our sun does, but as I said before, it is smaller and cooler. Now, perhaps the most intriguing star on the list, which once again had two signals detected coming from it, at least that appears to be the case, is 10 Canum Venaticorum, which is a main-sequence yellow star, very similar to our own. Roughly the same age, roughly the same temperature, roughly the same same habitable zone, almost a twin of our own sun, at least as far as we can tell. Once again, it lies about 57 light years away, and we haven't studied it in great detail. Therefore, it's difficult to tell exactly how similar it is to our own sun, or whether it has any exoplanets, but once again, two narrowband, artificial-looking signals coming from this star. Very interesting indeed. Now, the closest star in the survey, HIP 13402, is also one of the least promising. It is a K-class main sequence star, however, it's only about 200 million years old, far too young to have produced any sort of intelligent life on any yet-to-be-observed exoplanets. However, there is a very interesting feature about this star. It has an unseen companion. It is a binary star of some kind, and we know very little about the companion star that it appears to be orbiting. That being the case, the planetary system that formed in this unusual binary pair may actually be older than the star we're observing. That has yet to be determined because, once again, the star has not been observed in great detail, at least not up to this point. So what does all of this mean? If any of these signals are indeed legitimate, or it if they appear to be legitimate, it suggests that we have extraterrestrial civilizations dwelling right in our local neighborhood, close enough, at least in theory, to pay us a visit sometime in the near future, and close enough to have observed the industrial pollution present in our atmosphere if they have good enough observational instruments to do so. And if they're capable of sending out signals like this, they certainly have telescopes as good as James Webb. That being the case, these signals might have been sent to us with the idea of making contact, or perhaps these were signals sent to probes that have already been dispatched to take a closer look at us. Perhaps a signal sent to a muamua or something similar to it? Once again, this is wild speculation at this point, and something I'm really not going to entertain as being all that serious, but the fact remains that any artificial signals that we we detect this close to our own sun suggests that we also have civilizations that are close enough to visit our own civilization sometime in the near future should they choose to, and that's something we should
should take very, very seriously. Please subscribe to my channel. We're only 5,300 subscribers away from that magic 100K. Also, please like this video. Please check the description for various ways to support this content. And as always, stay angry about space.